and execution. It is the will of God and His Majesty George Augustus, King of Great Britain and Ireland, Duke of Brunswick Lundberg, and Prince Elector of the Holy Roman Empire, that on this day, the 7th of July, 1743, that it be known the outcome of court martial of the mutineers, formerly of the 43rd Regiment of Troops. The Secretary of War, John Winnington, and the Lord Justices of Great Britain and Ireland had found guilty the 110 men of the as said Regiment of Highlanders. Each been found guilty of treason, a crime punishable by death. The Secretary of War and Lord Justices have taken into consideration the acts of each individual as well as the physical and mental state of each man and have pronounced sentence accordingly. <coughs> Although treason is a low crime punishable by death, His Majesty wishes to show leniency. It is therefore granted that 26 men, being of weak body or mind, should be sent in military service, but not with the regiment, to Gibraltar and Majorca. Eighty fellow mutineers will be sent to see service with His Majesty's Army in Georgia and the Leeward Islands. Peter McGregor, alias McAlpine, alias Campbell, for deserting and exchanging his great belted plaid for small clothes, shall receive a thousand lashes from the Cat of Nine Tails at five different times, 200 lashes each time. But for Corporal Samuel McPherson and Malcolm McPherson and Private Shaw, as leaders of the said mutiny, quiet please, their punishment should be greater. They have therefore been found guilty and sentenced to be shot by military fire show shall be led to a place of execution within the walls of the Tower of London, where they will be shot by the Tower Guard on order of the Secretary of War. May God have mercy upon them. God save the King. God save the King. Yeah. Yeah. So the poor Black Watch Regiment, when they signed up, they believed they were simply going to be guarding the glens of Scotland. Unfortunately, as you heard, they were actually moved down to London to be shipped abroad. They rebelled and decided to try to go back to Scotland. As you've learned, they were captured and the so-called leaders were executed. But of course, the Black Watch soldiers were very different from the ordinary soldiers in the battlefield. They carried different kind of weapons. In fact, come forward here, bud. Before we shoot you, we'll just get <laughs> They've got a round wooden shield called a targe, covered in leather, heavily studded. They held behind the targe a long-bladed knife, which is called a dirk. But the dirk was held in the hand, concealed behind the shield, with the bottom end sticking out to cut towards their opponent's body in battle. Lastly, they had what we call the basket broadsword, excellent weapon for fighting on the battlefield. Now, traditionally, what a Highlander would do is he'd come onto the battlefield, discharge his musket and drop it to the ground. Disgraceful in the British Army, but they still did that. Then he rushes towards the enemy, carrying these weapons. He pushes you off balance with the shield, cuts to your body with the dirk, then slices you down the middle with a sword, and you fall into two bits. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, this is how the Highland regiments fought, but it's not how the rest of the Scottish regiments fight. We fight as all the regiments of the British Army with this. I'm going to take a moment to show you the weapon of the British Army soldier in the 18th century. It's called the Brown Bess Musket. 11 pounds, 2 ounces in weight, very heavy gun to carry around. I can show you what they fire from it. It's a lead bullet. Looks pretty horrific. In that form, it looks harmless, but it was as deadly as a gun today. If the bullet hit you, it would make a very small entry wound, about the size of your finger. But it's lead, so it flattens out an impact. So it makes an exit wound the size of your fist. So it's just as deadly as a gun today. For a soldier to fire it, he actually made up cartridges. And inside the cartridge at the top was the bullet. and the bottom, there was gunpowder. He would take a cartridge out of the bag and bite the bottom of the cartridge. He then opened this bit here called the flash pan. Now this is where you get the phrase, a flash in the pan. You might have heard that before. You put some of the powder into the flash pan, close down the lid and trap the powder within. Then take the rest of the cartridge and place it into the barrel. It's got the remainder of the powder and the bullet. I'm not going to put it down there because I'll never get it back. Use this thing called the ramrod to push the cartridge down to the bottom. Then you replace the ramrod and the gun, in theory, was ready to fire. You pull back the hammer and squeeze the trigger. Held in here is a piece of flint. 
When the flint would come forward, it would knock the top of the pan open and cause a spark. That spark would ignite the powder within the pan, travel through a small hole to the powder in the barrel, and the gun went off. That doesn't seem complicated at all, does it? <laughs> How many times did a soldier have to be able to fire this, sir? Three to four. Three once. Three times a minute. And if we can't fire it three times a minute, what do we do to the Highlanders? Encourage them with maybe 50 lashes in the quick. Quite right too, sir, yeah. Now, when a soldier would actually fire a gun, he held it very close to his face, and the gunpowder used to burn the side of the soldier's face. As time went on, the soldiers began to suffer from a disfigurement called peppering. The poor quality gunpowder used to burn into their skin and leave their effect like pepper upon their face. By the time the Napoleonic Wars came along, soldiers were being allowed to have some facial hair. Notice the Highlanders got facial hair, but normal regiments were required to shave. Eventually, the king allowed the regiments to have some hair, but they could only grow on the side of their face to protect them from the discomfort. <laughs> soldiers called that facial hair side burns. And that's where the phrase originated from. So sideburns were not invented by Elvis Presley, as he believes, they were invented by redcoat soldiers. Also another phrase you may have heard, going off half cocked. When you loaded a brown best musket, you put it into the safety position called half cock. Then when you've loaded it, you pull it back to full cock to fire it. But if you fired this gun more than once, the mechanism used to heat up and become rather unstable. You might accidentally touch the trigger of the gun, the gun goes half cocked and you've hit one of your friends in the front line. But there was one other weapon the soldier had, this, the bayonet. 17 inches of fluted steel, clipped onto the end of your gun. It was angled away so you could still load your gun when your bayonet was fixed. It now gives you six feet of a reach to defend yourself upon the battlefield. The soldier used the bayonet for only one other thing, nothing to do with fighting though. If he was staying in a tent, he sticks it into the tent and pops his candle in the top. And that will light his tent at night, keeps it away from the straw in the room. He did have one other weapon. Can I give you that, sir? He carries a brass hilted sword. Highlander, can you step forward with your sword? Would you mind? British Army foot soldier brass hilted sword. Not a very impressive weapon compared to the Highlanders' weapons. Not just that, of course, the Highlanders were very skillful with these weapons. In particular, they had in the front these two things here called lugs. And the idea was if you were fighting with your opponent, the Highlander could actually trap your blade between the lugs and take the sword from your hand. You also use it to punch you on the nose of the tight, don't even think about it. <laughs> the British Army foot soldier was very poorly trained in the use of the sword, unlike the Highland regiments. In fact, there's one account of an officer who actually recorded that he saw a young redcoat soldier in the midst of the battle trying to kill one of the enemy with a sword. He remarked it was clear to see the young man had never been trained how to use the weapon correctly, but he was using it as a club to cover the enemy to death. <laughs> now, we don't know if he was a stupid soldier or simply he wasn't trained, but we'll never know. But the one thing that made these Highland regiments very different from everyone else was the way in which they looked. As you can see, they're wearing tartan and also a plaid. Oh, you're a volunteer for this. You'll do. Nicole, what's your name? Was it? No, you're not getting shot. It's just like getting shot. You know, <laughs> dress, you look like a Highlander. Right? You can do that thing for me if you like. That's a wee fair display getting shot. That's a nice. And the Highland clansman, hold that for me. What's your name? Was it? Ben. Never remember that, I'll call you Dougal. Right. <laughs> <laughs>